I'm going to show you how to repair the unit in inductive charging stand. Uh, this has a really common problem and they're all breaking. Uh, some people will be able to fix it themselves if you have any soldering ability. Uh, what happens is the this might, uh, you put a phone in and the light lights up and it stays solid lit but it never charges the battery. That's because the inductive um, coil uh, isn't getting the power it needs and it won't charge the battery. Now, if this light is ever blinking, that means your power adapter is bad because there's no circuitry to make that light blink. If the light is blinking, it's actually your power adapter turning on and off uh, because there's a failure in the power adapter. Now, you might have um, uh, an orange, yellow, I think they make a gray one, um, but they all look similar to this. And there's a couple different model numbers. Now, the, uh, the newer power adapter, this is a switching power adapter, and it's uh, 21, oh no, this one's 19. Some of them are, some of them are 21. Okay, this, this is the, the old transformer style power adapter, 21 volts. Those don't break very often unless the cord's busted or the plug's bad. Um, but the, the new switching ones, these do get hot and will break. These are 19 volt output. And um, it's really, they, they're not really repairable, so you have to get a replacement, and it's hard because it's got a special right angle uh, tiny plug on it. And you can't use anything else because it just won't fit and then it's down on the, on the bench. Um, but anyway, if your light comes on solid and just doesn't charge, it's because the capacitor, there's a capacitor inside that's bad. And uh, you just take out the four screws. I've already got two of them out. It's a really easy fix. These all have the same issue. You get that open. Um, there's some wires here, just tucked in little slots. You just pull those out. The circuit board comes right out. Now that capacitor is bad. Most of them are a one microfarad, uh, 50 volt, and I put in a one mi microfarad, uh, 100 volt replacement because uh, you can go higher on the voltage, and hopefully it'll last longer. Um, so it's just soldered right there. And you need to uh, desolder it however you want. Um, you might have a desoldering pump or desoldering braid. If you don't have any of those things, you can um, wiggle it out. I like to just grab it and try to use the soldering iron to heat up both leads at the same time and wiggle and pull it out. Now, you can't put the new one in because there's solder in the way. You might be able to heat it up and kind of move it out of the way if you don't have any way of removing it. Um, not much luck. You could potentially like start the leads and then heat it up and push them in, but it's it's kind of tricky. I've got some desoldering braid that just basically sucks up the solder like a straw into the copper braid. Okay, when you put the new one in, now there are some of these that have 47 microfarad caps, so you've got to match what kind of capacitor it is. Most of them are the one microfarad. Some of them have a transistor that's kind of bent around and it's like added in as an afterthought or design change. Um, but those seem to be older, um, so I'm not sure what exactly went on there. But the, the long lead on is usually positive. You can see the negative is marked on the side there. It's the short lead. And it's marked on the board. So make sure you get it in right. If you put it in backwards, they will explode. They'll probably not work. And then some, sometimes they make noises and squeal. And then they'll eventually blow up. So you can solder that in. And... Cut off the extra wire. Now, 99, well, 95% of the time, that's all you need to do is replace that cap. There, um, quite often, will be burnt 
in this area, this gets really hot because that capacitor has failed. All the power is just kind of, it's not going to the coil, it's just getting dissipated. Um, so this heats up a lot. I've never seen one of these break, but I have seen this get so hot that it cooks these resistors off. These are two little surface mount resistors, and I've seen it look really bad and still work. Um, but if those do get fried and kind of fall off, they're both 100 ohm, and they both connect the same place. So they're basically making a 50 ohm resistor that can handle a little bit more um, power than a single 50 ohm resistor. So it's two 100 ohm resistors. And really, it goes from this lead, connects up here, that lead, and then they both go over to this, which is all the grounded area here. So um, I have used, in the few, very few times I've had to fix this, I'll take two 100 ohm um, you know, wire lead resistors and just you know, twist the ends together, solder them together to make one big 50 ohm resistor. And then I'll solder it right to that leg of this transistor and then right over here to, to this um, or you know you might be able to solder on onto that side but usually if those are burnt it's pretty damaged um, you can actually go uh, anywhere that this attached this ground is I think right there so you could go from here oh sorry anywhere here you could scratch off um, this to to expose the copper and solder the resistor here to there. Uh, you could solder it to there. The capacitor we just changed, that's all on this grounded area here. Or if you really want to leave the wires long and maybe insulate them with some heat shrink tubing, you could go all the way over here. Um, so anyway, that's probably not going to be necessary anyway. So once you got that capacitor changed, you just put everything back. tucks in there, and then the wires kind of tuck down into those slots. And this comes over here, and just sits there. And then we've got the inductive coil on that wire, and I just bend that down. Sometimes I put tape to hold this down because it's kind of annoying. It falls out a lot. These kind of plastic flaps are meant to hold that in place, I guess, until you get it assembled is fine. So everything's there and that's it. You put it back together. Now it is possible that your capacitor went bad and that it cooked your power adapter. Um, so the power adapter can go bad. Usually when this is bad the light won't light up or it'll blink. Um, I, it, it, technically, it's possible that it could light up this solid and still not charge, but I'm not, I don't. That would be really weird, um, or un, very uncommon at least. So, um, if you've got the transformer style, these never break that I'm aware of, um, and. Also, these are interchangeable. It says 21, this one's 21 volts and 19 volts. I've tested this. This will work like with um, 18 volts. It'll work with 24 volts. And uh, they're low power, 100 milliamp. So you're not going to find a power adapter lower than 100 milliamp. They're usually 350, 500 milliamp. Um, so really anything. Um, the tricky part, of course, would be the plug. So if you needed a new power adapter, maybe you could go to a thrift store and find a, you know, a, a 24 volt power adapter, and then you could cut the wire off. And make sure you get the polarity correct, and really to do that right, because you don't know what this power adapter is, which, which, you know, they're usually marked with a stripe, but who knows if they wired that up inside the same way. So you need a power adapter. It should be center positive. So if you put the, your your um, multimeter down in there, you might need a paper clip or um, yeah, like a bent paper clip to stick down in the hole. 
and then touch the outside should be ground and the, and the center should be positive once you put it together um, and that's it so that's how to fix that so what, when you're done put your phone in uh, it should light up the display even with a pretty dead battery after a few minutes um, I would wait a while the power adapter this this charger stand should not get overly hot down here and uh, if it does, you know, there, it's maybe you have a bad power adapter um, after after the repair. But usually that only heats up when that, that capacitor is bad. But just make sure it's charging good. Don't, like, put it in and walk away and come back tomorrow because um, who knows what this thing is going to do after you fixed it. Just keep an eye on it. Make sure nothing's getting too hot and that it actually is charging your phone. That's it. Thanks for watching.